Well, good morning boys and girls, and anyone else. Um, a question came via private message, why do I say that? I mean, I know Peter asked me, and some, but somebody else asked me if it was anything to do with sort of, you know, different races, religions, or... No, I'm not, I'm not like that. Um, absolutely none. I don't care about religions, race, politics, anything. I'll get on with it. Now that is one of the talks I'm going to have now. I'm just riding because it's such a gorgeous day, not a cloud in the sky. Okay, it's only four degrees, five degrees. But what a gorgeous, brilliant winter's day. 11th of January, is it? 10th, 11th, I don't know, I don't keep track. And it is just gorgeous. So my talk today is, what tools did your parents give you to handle life? Let's go down here. No traffic behind me to scare. Um, I'll run through a few of the tools I've got. My father, ex-war hero, ex-army officer, worked left and worked his way up through to become a very senior police officer. Um, Ex-SAS, parachute regiment, got a couple of chapters in books about a real hero now he and my mother never laid a finger on anybody you know children wise sorry he was hard as nails but he never touched us kids and I've carried that on I've never smacked a child ever you know all my daughters never smack them use your voice use logic use persuasion use treats use penalties but not the hand he also taught me that whatever else you do in life, you should do it because you want to. Now that is very important. Hello, all the horses are out today. Whatever I do, he said, I don't care whether you're sweeping roads, prostitution, or a managing director. Whatever you do, do it because you want to and do it to the best of your ability. It doesn't matter if you fail, as long as you've done it to the best of your ability. He had that way of making people feel they could accomplish anything and if they didn't, it didn't matter. Um, you know, at least they'd tried. And now I don't mean that you should just go failing all over the place. Let's put a bit of logic in this. Just that power to fail. He empowered me to fail, but get on with my life. There was no penalty. I wasn't under sufferance. Um, and he taught me not to be bullied. He said, never let anyone bully you. Bearing in mind, he, he went through the war. So um, Hitler and Nazism and all that. And he said, never let anybody ever, ever bully you. Which was a damn good lesson. Um, all the new schools I went to, I probably had 15 schools. Bully would always come up to you and have a go. And my dad taught me how to deal with bullies. So they'd have one little pathetic go and stay well away from me after that. Um, breaking the subject. Look at that scenery. Isn't it beautiful? Not a cloud in the sky. I can see to the horizon, which is about 12 miles, 11, 12 miles, knowing the villages. I'm not sure what you're picking up on this camera. Oh, there's a little cloud over there. Oh, 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 little cloud. So I'll come out at the right time of day. Yeah. So never bull anyone, including children, employees, employers, anybody. <coughs> on the road, don't bully people. Yeah, I'll have a pop if something's wrong, but I won't bully them. Um, when I used to drive trucks and buses, I would never try and force somebody over. I always found that indicating and being patient paid off. What did my mother give me? Now, oh, oh. skills that hacked off quite a few wives, I'm afraid. My mother taught me to knit. She taught me to sew. I can sew better than either of my wives. Well, you know, three relationships, but only two were actual marriages. One was. Uh, one was a relationship and sadly she passed away so we won't go on to that one but 
I could sew better than any of them. My mother in the army taught me to iron. I can iron a shirt to perfection, or trousers, or anything else. And on a Sunday morning, I used to find it relaxing, go downstairs, two daughters and a wife. Um, I was in an office job, do all the shirts, the blouses, the trousers, the skirts, while well, everyone else was in bed, because I'm an early riser. I used to like getting up half five, six. Um, always been an early riser. I'm, my wife's the opposite. She'll stay up till God knows what hour at night. I can't, but she can't get up in the mornings. I can. So it was a good match. So I used to find the ironing relaxing. Only took a couple of hours. Music playing. Nice cup of tea, bacon butty, and do the ironing. She taught me to cook. Taught me to cook the old-fashioned way by looking at the quantities in the palm of your hand by understanding the chemistry of pastry and meats and knowing how much salt how much pepper you know butter to flour ratio for pastry i love making cakes chocolate cakes um, all my daughters adore um, i'll do a full roast dinner i'll do pheasant i'll do anything you want and i probably only resorted to a recipe book about three times in my entire life usually when i'm doing something um, one Christmas I was doing three bird roast and suckling pig and I needed to get use the oven for both lots and I wanted to balance temperatures because getting suckling pig and the crackling rye is, can be quite difficult and again three bird roast you want to make sure it's cooked all the way through so she taught me to cook she taught me to mingle with people because we travelled different countries, different towns and she taught me to explore. If we were somewhere new, even as a little kid of eight, she'd say, well, I'm going to shop in the market here. You go off and explore and I'll meet you back here in half an hour. And then it got stretched to an hour. And then, you know, by the, by the age of 10, I was going to town on my own, even in a strange town, move somewhere. Oh, Alan, we need so-and-so. Would you pop to town? Yep. Go down, find out what time the bus was or ask a neighbor, go into the local town. So I learned to travel. I've been to most countries in the world, apart from, apart from America. Uh, one day I'll afford to get there. Well, I've been to Iraq, Iran, Amman, Qatar. Let me tell you, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran. The people are wonderful people. Russia, the people are wonderful people. The governments are crap. So, don't believe what you see on the news. These people are wonderful, welcoming, lovely people. The news looks at what their government's doing, looks at what terrorists are doing, um, scares the whole world. Would I go to Iran or Iraq tomorrow? Bloody right if, I'd have, if I had the money. I'd like to ride through the country again. They're welcoming, they're friendly, and they're helpful. So don't believe the shite you see on the news. So they give me the gift of being able to travel anywhere without fear. Being able to navigate, you could throw me in anywhere. When I was driving trucks, you could throw me in the middle of a, a, a town that I didn't know, and I'd find somewhere and I'd find my way home effectively and efficiently. Um, parents are wonderful things, but they can also be a nightmare. I have a friend, a very close friend. Parents were a nightmare. Mother was an alcoholic, father was abusive. He grew up to be a wonderful lad, a magnificent man, you know, he's somebody you can trust, somebody you go to for help. Despite, now, I also know a young girl, despite having horrendous, abusive parents, she grew up to be an outstanding young lady. So, you know, do, do our parents reflect on us? Me, yes, I'm like my father because I want to be like my father. He was inspirational. Still very windy. He knew when to be hard, and he could be hard. We we'll say ex SAS, ex paratrooper. He could be hard. But he knew when to be soft, and he loved children. Um, he just loved children. Uh, didn't matter what you did. When he was a policeman, didn't matter what a child did he would explain to the parents what they were doing wrong 
and I think I picked a little bit of that up when I used to do parish hall inquiries and you catch a lad a bit of petty theft or shoplifting or something um, they had to appear with their parents I would lecture the parents I'd leave the kid alone because it's usually the upbringing from the parents so here we are in uh, <coughs> bird paradise again 